What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I'm going to be going over my current running shoe rotation because I know a couple of you guys have asked me about it. So here you go. I'm going to break down the video into different sections where I will talk about my recovery or slow pace shoes. Uh, then I'll go over my tempo, fast paced workout shoes, and then finally my racing shoes. So this will hopefully give you a good idea of what I'm using for my current training. And if this is your first time to the channel or you enjoy the content, please hit that like and subscribe button as well as the bell for the notifications. And thank you to all my returning subscribers for your contributions and support. So let's get this video started. <laughs> So just to preface before we start the video, you may have noticed if you've been watching my channel that I run in a lot of Nike shoes. Um, they just happen to work well on my feet and I really enjoy them. Um, it's not to say that Nike's better than any other brand out there. There's people that wear Adidas, Saucony, or you name it, uh, that you know run just as well or better. Same in the professional league as well. So just uh, keep that in mind. And also, many people might think I have you know 50 or 100 pairs of shoes uh, that I use at once, which is just not feasible or practical. Um, I have about 10 to 15 pairs of shoes that I think I use in my current rotation. Um, I do have shoes that are, you know, expired or, you know, I've retired over the years. Uh, but usually I only have about 10 to 15 pairs of shoes, which might seem a lot uh, to your average person. But as a runner, you will understand <laughs> that you go through shoes very quickly. So I just think it's, you know, more practical and it's easier to manage, you know, instead of having, you know, 50 pairs of shoes. Uh, it's just too much in my opinion. So I I honestly don't even use all of my 10 to 15 shoes. And I probably have like four or five favorites that I use uh, most of the time. But I like to know that I have options when it comes to different either races or different types of training where I can put on certain type of shoes that, you know, would be better uh, for those days. So starting out with recovery runs, so I only have about three shoes that I pretty much use right now for my rotation. Um, these shoes I can use for any types of slow runs, recovery runs, or even just walking around or using it for trips. Um, so starting off, I have my Invincible runs, so the first one and the second one, uh, which are pretty much the same, but I pretty much worn down the first one already, but um, now I use it for just walking. So these are probably one of the all-time favorite like uh, recovery shoes that I've used so far. They're just comfortable, soft, they're just so much cushion, and it just feels like my foot is inside a pillow <laughs> when I'm running in this. So that's pretty much exactly what I'm looking for when I'm, you know, trying to get a recovery shoe, a shoe that's comfortable, you know, that's not necessarily fast or even lightweight, but that will, you know, make my feet feel good and then and I won't feel any, any additional soreness. Um, after my you know slower runs so the first and second like I said before are very similar uh, they have a lot of padding the ton is padded there's just ton of zoom x foam in the bottom which is like Nike's high-end foam that they use for you know all of their top end racing shoes so they put it in this shoe uh, which you know uh, makes it a great recovery shoe as well and the price of this thing is about hundred and eighty dollars I believe now so it's definitely not cheap by any means but you get what you pay for um, with this recovery shoe so I have about five to six hundred miles with the invincible one ones um, the, it's holding up pretty good in my opinion just the uh, rubber on the bottom I have worn out a little bit on the back area but I still use it uh, you know sometimes for walking and I use it on for the treadmill at home uh, for the twos, I use this now primarily for my, you know, regular recovery runs. Um, every time I do a fast workout or, or a slow day, I pretty much just pick up the shoe and use it um, all the time. Um, it's just so comfortable. It's a good uh, stability shoe. And, you know, it's just, uh, it does exactly what it's meant to do, which is to give your, you know, legs some rest um, and, you know, relief after a hard workout. So Invincible Runs and Twos are my main uh, primary recovery shoes. So the third recovery shoe that I have here is the Nike Infinity Run uh, shoe, which is the same for the second and third version. Um, this shoe is a little bit stiffer and it's also a bit, I feel like a little bit faster than the Invincible Run. So I pick up this shoe occasionally, you know, when I, my feet is not really uh, that tired and, you know, I just want to kind of go a little bit faster on my recovery runs. But 
it's still a good stability shoe. It helps, you know, prevent injuries. And this has a lot of React foam on the bottom of the shoe as, com as opposed to the ZoomX foam. Um, so this is also a uh, option that I have in case, you know, I don't really use this shoe as much as the Invincible runs, but sometimes, you know, I just feel like uh, putting on putting this on when I feel like going faster. Um, it's also comfortable as well, but this is probably like my uh, favorite shoe that I use to go on trips with or just walk around. Uh, the price of this shoe is about $160 now, so it's a little, little bit cheaper than the Invincible runs. Um, still a little bit expensive, I feel like, for a recovery shoe, but, you know, it is uh, it is what it is, and uh, it's a very comfortable shoe. Uh, it's a good recovery shoe. Uh, it's just not the softest one that I have. So next, we'll move on to the Tempo fast-paced shoes. So my newest addition is the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3. This is pretty much my favorite shoe in my rotation, or the shoe that I've now been using the most. Um, I also have the Endorphin Speed 1 here, the OGs, which, you know, I've got about four or 500 miles in, and they still are holding up great, especially the rubber. You can tell pretty much not much has worn off. Even the rubber on the bottom uh, is worn off a little bit, but you can tell how durable the shoe is and how nice it is. And it hasn't really changed much um, overall, in my opinion, since 1, 2, and 3, but they've made some minor tweaks in this shoe on the third version um, to make this shoe pretty much uh, like almost as perfect as can be. Um, it's super lightweight, uh, 7.4 ounces in my size, um, which is almost the same size as your top end racing shoes out there. And it's fast, it's got great stability now, and it also has a nylon plate inside to give you some energy return. And then the Power Run PB foam is also a very nice foam. Um, it's obviously not as soft maybe as Zoom X. It's just got the perfect balance of stiffness and softness in the foam and combine that with the speed roll technology makes the shoe probably one of the best shoes out there for an all around shoe. And I've, you know, like I said before, I've been using this a lot now. So um, one thing to keep in mind, this shoe does wear a little bit faster in terms of the foam on the bottom, uh, especially if you have a colored version. Um, you know, the rubber itself is good, but the foam uh, will wear off a little bit faster if you heel strike or, you know, run on certain parts of the shoe more often, uh, which is more of a cosmetic issue. So this shoe is about $170, so it's not the cheapest shoe out there, but for this that price, um, you get a lot uh, bang for your buck, and it's, I feel like, honestly better than some of the, you know, racing shoes out there. Next up, you have the Zoom Fly 4 that I have here. Um, this used to be one of my go-to, you know, tempo fast pace shoes now, but that has pretty much been replaced by the Endorphin Speed. Um, I used to like this shoe because it kind of was like the baby brother to like the Vapor Fly. It has a plate, carbon plate in this shoe as well. Gives you good energy returns, not too stiff, um, but you know, it's not very soft either. It was okay, you know, it's, uh, it, it's, it does its job. Um, it's quick, it's got good responsiveness, but um, you know, it's, now it's just not my uh, favorite <laughs> Temple shoe anymore. I still use it time to time when I kind of want to switch it up. You know, it's, uh, it's got good durability. I've used it quite uh, a lot now, and only the rubber piece on the bottom has started to wear, but everything else has kept its shape, which is good. Um, I like the design of the shoe. It's very uh, flashy and bright, and you know, kind of you know resembles a little bit of the Vaporfly uh, in a way. And it's supposed to be kind of like its companion shoe, uh, which I don't think it is as much as you know some other shoes that Nike has. But um, it's a good you know temple shoe, uh, and it's a good option to have. But I don't use it as much now as opposed to the Endorphin Speed. So um, this was my go-to shoe, and it's, it's quick, it's responsive, it's a little bit heavy in my opinion you know, it's about like over nine uh, something ounces so uh it's a good option but i you know endorphin speed definitely is uh taking the top spot in my rotation right now next up we have the pegasus turbo 2 uh which is probably one of my another shoe that i have that's probably one of my favorite shoes of all time too bad they discontinued the pegasus uh turbo line um, they did come out with a Pegasus Next Nature, which is nothing compared to the original Pegasus Turbos. Um, I still have the original uh, Pegasus Turbo 2 color here. Um, I don't use this shoe as much either. It's a little bit uh, worn down, in my opinion, uh, with the foam and everything, since I've ran a lot in this shoe. It's very durable as well. You can see I, after I clean the shoe up, there's still rubber on the shoe. 
and there's not much that has worn down except for maybe the edge uh, but this shoe has a react foam as well as zoom x foam and that combination that between these two shoes along with the weight of the shoe which is very light at about seven ounces or so i believe makes this shoe incredible quick and incredible fast and it's got great energy return it's definitely a very sought after shoe um, you can't really pick up the shoe anymore new unless you buy it off a reseller's market but if you ever had a chance to go take a look at how much one of these brand new would cost it'll probably shock you um, since everyone seemed to really like uh, this shoe so unfortunately this shoe has been discontinued i sometimes use it for like walking now or just you know it runs every now and then but you know it's still in my collection and it's one of my favorite shoes of all time so next we have the vaporfly four percent um that was like the original uh, racing shoe that nike released that you know was making headlines you know breaking records and things like that um so I originally had this shoe for races, but now it's kind of, you know, been demoted to a fast uh, tempo shoe, and it's still really good. Uh, so that's what I usually do with my racing shoes, is when I use them for a period of time, or when I feel like they don't have that pop anymore, I just demote them to my, you know, up-tempo, fast-paced shoe instead. So this was one example of that. Um, you can clearly tell the shoe is pretty much worn down to its bones. Uh, there's still some rubber left, but the you know foam has been pretty much worn down a lot. There's a plate in this shoe, and this is probably one of the best fly knits that I've raced in from Nike. It's just so comfortable. It just kind of wraps my ankles and my feet, and my feet just feels like one. And this shoe is just super light. I think it's only about six point something ounces. So I think it's another one of Nike's you know greatest uh, designs in terms of racing shoes. Um, now that we have the Al Vapor Fly and the Alpha Fly, and they all came from this. So, this is a nice option that I have for you know when I want to do kind of like long uh, miles, quick tempo kind of pace runs. I just pick this up, and sometimes I use it for just short ladder or you know a, f a far lick or kind of tempo runs as well. So, this is another option that I keep. Um, to do my uh, workouts when I really want to go fast in so I have I don't use this shoe much either right now It's everything like I said before is kind of being dominated by the endorphin speed 3 But occasionally I switch to this uh, when I want a change of pace or just something different So the final tempo shoe that I have in my current rotation is this old uh, Alpha fly next percent one uh, similar to my previous shoe the four percent This was a shoe that I've worn for multiple marathons and now it's kind of demoted to like my tempo uh, shoe. And it's, you know, it's these shoes, even though they're worn, uh, I feel like they're great for tempo runs or just any runs. They still are a lot faster than your standard shoe, in my opinion, even though they've been worn down. So they still have the features like, you know, the Zoom pods, as well as the carbon fiber plate, the Zoom X foam, um, and all of this atom net material and stuff that makes it, you know, a great shoe for fast paced runs. Now I have about 400 plus miles on this Alpha Fly shoe and it's still holding up. So I use this shoe sometimes for like marathon pace training or even rarely long runs uh, where I need to go like uh, fast in certain uh, situations or uh, even workouts in. So as you can tell, the rubber on the top is pretty much like flat now after running in all of it. Um, rubber on the bottom's kind of like almost smoothed out as well, but everything else is intact. The air pods are still good. Um, I it's a piece of the foam did kind of come off, but that was really my fault while running. So everything else is kind of hold, held in its place, and you know it's still working as expected. I obviously the pop is not going to be the same as a brand new pair. So uh, you know this is also another go-to shoe that I go choose. Um, you know for tempo, fast-paced runs. So. Uh, so with all of these Temple Fast Pace shoes, you know, it's, uh, I don't really have like a formula <laughs> on how I decide which one to pick. Um, it's kind of like, you know, what am I doing today? Is this going to be a long, like, long run or short run with, you know, fast pace or is it marathon pace or is it, you know, threshold pace? So I kind of take all that into effect and then kind of decide what works for me. But if it's a default shoe that I go to, it's always going to be right now the Endorphin Speed 3. Um, so, you know, this is also another option to have, and I'm sure a lot of people have these, you know, racing shoes that just they don't, you know, use anymore for their actual races. So these are great options to have um, for your faster, you know, quicker days. So next up, we have the fun category of the racing shoes. So first up is, you know, a well-known shoe that pretty much everybody has seen. 
This is the Nike Vaporfly Next Percent 2. Um, I had the one before, but now that has re been retired. But I've, you know, got about two half marathons and maybe a couple 5Ks in this shoe. So this shoe is still good in my opinion. Um, this is my shorter distances kind of racing shoe that I would use for 5Ks all the way to maybe a half marathon. Um, you can tell that it's still in really good condition after being washed. Um, it's, all of the rubber is still kind of there. And I, you know, haven't really used this shoe at all except for races. Um, I haven't demoted this shoe yet, so it's still kind of in the box for the most of the time until I have a race or where I need this. So any 5Ks, again, to half marathons, I would choose a shoe. Um, it's probably one of the most popular racing shoe out there on the planet right now that everyone uses. Um, this shoe is just super lightweight, even lighter than the Alpha Fly, about six point something ounces for my size. Uh, everything is just perfect. It's got the you know material mesh up here that's breathable um, and Carbon fiber plate, Zoom X foam, you name it, uh, asymmetrical and la uh, notch laces uh, brings everything together. So if you go to any race out there or you watch it on TV, you're going to see somebody with a version or colorway of this shoe. So um, this shoe is kind of what started the whole, you know, um, controversy of her should, you know, shoes get banned because it's making you faster. Um, so uh, this is pretty much it. Um, so I keep it in my box for most of the time until I need it. So next up we have the full marathon shoes. So I'll, the first one is the Alpha Fly Next Percent 1 in this Ekaden colorway. Uh, if I only used this for about one marathon, which is the Tunnel Marathon um, this year in June. So it's only got about 25 miles in it. So I still consider this a prime racing shoe for marathons or any races uh, for that matter. As you can tell, you know, it's got some wear on it from one marathon, but nothing big. Still got, you know, it still has plenty of pop and it still looks good. And I'll definitely pick this up for any races out there if needed. Um, I could still use this for a full marathon if I wanted to, but now with the Alpha Fly Next Percent 2 that just came out, I think I will switch over to that. Um, I might just use this for maybe shorter races just to see how this would work for, you know, uh, 5Ks to half marathons. But um, this is another shoe that I kind of keep in the box until race day. Um, so um, I still don't know when I'm going to be using this shoe, but uh, most likely it'll be for shorter races now. But, you know, $275, so uh, just like the Vaporfly at $250, it's not a very cheap shoe. Um, so a lot of people, you know, who don't really have a lot of running shoes might kind of baby the shoe a lot. Um, so, you know, it's, and it makes sense, right? So this shoe is similar to the Temple shoe I have with the Alpha Fly Next Percent, but that shoe has, has a lot more miles than this one. So I'm keeping this in the box until race day. And lastly, for my uh, final racing shoe, I have the newest edition of the Alpha Fly Next Percent 2. Um, this is the uh, mint colorway and uh, it's got slight upgrades compared to last year's version. Uh, with the new atom and material on the top, which is a little bit stiffer. It's got some foam now under the pods um, You know, they've made some adjustments to the upper a little bit and overall it still feels like an alpha fly It weighs pretty much like an alpha fly Maybe it has a little bit more foam and a wider base But um, this is now my go-to marathon shoe and a shoe that I'm gonna be wearing in Berlin in a couple of weeks So the alpha fly has been the shoe that I've used for pretty much all of my marathons So that shoe along with this just works well on my feet and I know what to expect while running in the shoe and this shoe helps to keep my pace for dialed in for longer periods of time. And I've been fairly successful in the Alpha Flies. You know, I've gotten a lot of PRs uh, pretty much throughout all of my marathons. So no reason to change my racing shoe at the moment. So um, this is the Alpha Fly Next Percent 2 and my main racing shoe um, going forward. So that's really about it. So in my opinion, I feel like my shoe rotation is fairly simple. Um, to some people out there, you know, who are maybe newer runners or, you know, not as invested into running, they might think this is a lot of shoes. But honestly, I pretty much use like maybe about three or four of these shoes um, on in general. And some of these shoes I kind of just keep on the side for just in case or when I want to kind of change it up. Um, so, you know, there are people out there with you know, more shoes than I have, of course, maybe 50 or 100 pairs of shoes. But there's just no way... Uh, a person can use that many shoes and it's just not practical <laughs> by the time you get to use a pair another pair is going to be out the next year so you know i like to keep my rotation small and only shoes that i'm comfortable with but you know i do have backups that i've all shown in this video 
as well in case I need to change things up. So hopefully this gives you guys a better idea of my current running shoe rotation. I would love to hear what you guys use in your rotation and how many pairs of shoes you guys own. Um, if you guys have any other comments, feedback, or questions, please feel free to leave them down below. Hope you guys are all staying safe and your training is going well. And I will talk to you guys on the next run.